Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmala Sayata Nivayad Itaratas Chatesu Avigyaswarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaya Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatrati Sargo Misha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, destruction, and the creations, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. I meditate upon, uh, <clears throat> he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen in water. Or land seen in water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra paramo nirmatsaranam satam vedyam vastavam atra vastu shivadam tapa trayon mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Purer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hidi Avurudhi Tetra Kriti Bihi Susu Subis Takshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama kalpaturur galitam falam Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika buvi bhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. 
Shimad Bhagavatam, uh, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hirdiantak Sto Bhadrani, Vidu Nati Suhitsatam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he, mirrors, as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Emam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yoga daha bhagavat tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya kantis chidyante sarvasam saya Shiyante Chashikarmani Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, verse number 57. Savai Adyatanad Rajan Parata Panchame Hani Kalevaram Hasyati Swam Tachcha basmi bhavishyati. O king, he will quit his body, most probably on the fifth day from today, and his body will turn to ashes. So Narada Muni is explaining uh, about Dhritarashtra to Yudhisthira Maharaj. Narada Muni's prophecy purported by Srila Prabhupada, Narada Muni's prophecy prohibited Yudhisthira Maharaj from going to the place where his uncle was staying because even after quitting the body by his own mystic power, Dhritarashtra would not be in need of any funeral ceremony. Narada Muni indicated that his body by itself would burn to ashes. The perfection of the yoga system is attained 
by such mystic power. The yogi is able to quit his body by his own choice of time and can attain any planet he desires by turning the present body into ashes by self-made fire. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, we can see from this explanation how quickly a person can become sober if they have connection with a pure devotee like Vidura. And if they don't have such connection, then it's very possible that they never become serious about the purpose of life. As Prabhupada says, that everyone should inquire about the purpose of life, atato brahma jigyasa. And uh, if a person does that, then jivasya, uh, they, they become disinterested in material sense gratification and they become very inquisitive about what is the purpose of human life. Jivasya tattva jigyasa to make an inquiry about what is the absolute truth. Very few people do that. Why? Because they are distracted by animalism. Animalism is eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So they stay on the level of an animal and never progress to the spiritual level, which is jiva sittatva jigya sat making an inquiry about the Absolute Truth. So, here Dhritarashtra goes from a very attached, illusioned person to a very detached, serious person and, and uh, focused on uh, attaining the goal of life, that is, freedom from the cycle of birth and death and dedication the Lord Sri Krishna. So, so just like it says uh, in the, the uh, Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasya Chaham Hridi Sani Vishnu Matak Smriti Gyanam Apahanam Cha Vedaisya Sarveraham Eva Vedyo Krishna is the final goal of all the Vedic knowledge. Uh, and Vedanta Krit Veda Ved Eva Chaham He knows the Vedas, he compiled the Vedas, and he is the goal of the Vedas, or Vedic knowledge. And Veda means all knowledge. So the goal of all knowledge is to know Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Dhritarashtra was convinced by his brother Vidura that he should give up any more hankering and lamentation hankering for sense gratification, lamenting that one has lost sense gratification, and any more hopes of finding a place in the material world where he'll be happy, where he'll have sustained sense gratification. Such, such a thought, such a desire is impossible to attain. And therefore, uh, he became very serious, left the palace of Yudhisthira, left his protection, left his... Uh, 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 position of uh, honor, etc., and uh, became focused completely on leaving the material body and attaining uh, the stage of Brahma Bhuta. Brahma Bhuta means someone is liberated uh, from the entanglement of material nature. This uh, Brahma Bhuta. Pra platform is called Aham Brahmasmi. I am pure spirit. I'm not related to this body in any way. Okay, so the perfect state, the, the perfection of the yoga system is attained by such mystic power. Well, how does one attain mystic power? Well, one very good asset for obtaining mystic power is celibacy. Giving up sense gratification and remaining celebrate, no sex at all. So that's one way. Uh, that's, in fact, it's, it's actually absolutely required. So a 
Kriya Hasta, who engages in sex life only for procreation, is considered also like a brahmachari. So, uh, because they only use the, the act for procreation. So that is following the rules and regulations of spiritual life. So the yogi is able to quit his body by his own choice of time. So with another example of that was Bhisma Pitamaha. Although his body was riddled uh, and was, was pierced by hundreds of arrows and he was on a bed of arrows and by the time the battle of Kurukshetra was over he had no more blood and, and just flesh and bone. But yet he patiently waited so that he could explain Raja Dharma to uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj and uh, also teaching him the uh, Vishnu Sastram, Sutram, and so many things uh, and so that he would become the king. A pious king is absolutely necessary. A pious king who's a devotee is absolutely necessary for the peace and prosperity of society. <coughs> So, at the time of death, by his own choice, he can attain any planet he desires by turning the present body into ashes by self-made fire. Well, this is a difference between a serious yogi and a yogi who is still attached to the body. So the yogis are still attached to the body they have to, when they want to leave the body to travel around the universe, they have to put it in a place where nobody knows where it is and it's protected from animals and insects and other things. Otherwise, when they want to come back, if the body has been eaten or destroyed, then uh, they have nothing to come back to. So you see, the Egyptians, they were engaged in some kind of mystical yoga in the pyramids where they would outfit uh, a dead body, embalm it, and then put it in a room where there was food and all kinds of uh, uh, things necessary for traveling. The whole idea was to travel to other planets. It was, it was some type of, I, I would say, uh, a deteriorated or, or uh, a denatured uh, mystic yoga. However, the real yogis, they, they, they burn their body by their own internal fire of jnana agni, fire of knowledge. And then they can go to any planet they want and assume a body on that planet according to the elements of that planet or go back to Godhead where they have their spiritual body. So this is a very interesting thing how quickly Vidura was able to turn Dhritarasa's mind away from sense gratification and get it focused on jiva sitatva jigyasa, understanding what the absolute truth is. And then, if you understand what the absolute truth is, there's a change in activity. Just like, let's say, someone is a grihasta. So, they have so many duties to take care of the family and the children and and so forth. But after the children are, are grown up and married and family was taken care of, maintained, what is the duty of the grahasta? It is called vanaprasta and sannyas. And sannyas, the wife and the husband, both in a sense take sannyas. The husband dons the, the outfit of a sannyasi and takes up becoming a a, uh, a Parirajagacharya, someone who always travels, doesn't stay more than two or three days in one place, and preaches. But the wife also becomes a sannyasi by maintaining her celibacy, living with either her uh, adult children or living in a holy place like Vrindavan and practicing very strictly Krishna consciousness like a sannyasi. So it's not that the wife doesn't take sannyas after the husband leaves. She does. In, she lives in the same way as her husband is living, but under the protection either of a holy place or her 
uh, elderly, ch elderly children. Okay, are there any questions about this verse? Yeah, just the last sentence. Um, yeah, the yogi is able to create his time by his own choice, time, and he can attain any plan that he desires by turning the present body into ashes by self made fire. What does this mean? Well, there is fire in the body, right? Earth, water, fire, air, ether. So uh, he can increase that fire and uh, consume his body, his material body, because he's not the body, right? He's the soul. So they have that power. Sati did that also. So he's not the fire set up wood. Doesn't need it. He's self-sufficient, right? He, he didn't need anyone to do his funeral ceremony. See, that's what happens. <laughs> you talk about being uh, uh, self-sufficient. Uh, everything is in the body, right? The fire is in the body also. You just have to know how to, uh, you know, uh, evoke it. And also, there is the fire of knowledge, Janagni. Jnana Agni, yeah, it purifies all impurities. So these are mystical yogi practices. Do, do devotees have to do this? No. No, because Krishna comes on his chariot, on his uh, bird carrier, and personally takes the devotee back to Godhead. So devotee doesn't have to do these things, but one can do this through mystic yoga also. And therefore it says, Yanti Devan Ritan, whatever. Uh, and if you want to go to the planet of demigods, you can go to the planet of demigods. If you want to go back to Godhead, you can go back to Godhead. So it all depends on what the desire of the devotee is. <coughs> Yanti Devan Ritan Devan Pitrin Yanti Pitriyata. Bhutani yantri bhuteja, yanti madhya jino pimam. So those who worship the demigods will take birth amongst the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. And those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth amongst such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. So it all depends on the desire of the devotee. So Prabhupada says, first deserve, then desire. So we should live a strict life of discipline and tapasya uh, to purify ourselves. And the tapasya is actually enjoyable, chanting Hare Krishna, bathing regularly two or three times a day, and coming to Mangal Arati, chanting Hare Krishna. All these things are enjoyable, having prasadam. So, Prabhupada says, if one has a desire to go to the moon, the sun, or any other planet, one can attain the desired destination by following specific Vedic principles recommended for that purpose, such as the process technically known as Darsha Purnamasi. These are vividly described in the fruit of activities portion of the Vedas, which recommends a specific worship of demigods situated in different heavenly planets. Similarly, one can attain the Pita planets by performing a specific yajna. Similarly, one can go to many ghostly planets and become a yaksha, rak raksha, or pisacha. Pisacha worship is called black arts or black magic. There are many men who practice this black art, and they think that it is spiritualism. But such activities are completely materialistic. Similarly, a pure devotee who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead only achieves the planets of Vaikuntha and Krishna Loka without a doubt. It is very easy to understand through this important verse that if simply by worshiping the demigods one can achieve the heavenly planets, or by worshiping the pitas, achieve the pita planets, or by practicing the black arts, achieve the ghostly planets, why can the pure devotee not achieve the planet of Krishna or Vishnu? Unfortunately, many people have no information of these sublime planets where Krishna and Vishnu live. 
and because they do not know of them, they fall down. Even the impersonalists fall down from the Brahma Jyoti. The Krishna consciousness movement is therefore distributing sublime information to the entire human society to the effect that by simply chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to God. So you don't have to do all these things that Jitarashtra is doing. You simply have to engage in Krishna consciousness and chant Hare Krishna. Did Jitarashtra did all those things on the direction? He has a guru there. Vidura, Vidura. Vidura, when was that? I don't know if he went with him, but he convinced him to leave and to do this. Yeah, I mean, I understand to do this, you need uh, guidance, you need like, uh, this, this procedure. Huh? Well, he so followed, he some, definitely had knowledge of what to do because he did it strictly. See, a lot of these, I mean, these, these are not ordinary people. Jitarash is not an ordinary person. They were associating their whole life with Mahabhagavats, like Bhisma Pitama. Uh, so they know what's right, but because of material attachment, they didn't do it. But once they became, let's say, serious, then they know what to do. They were not ordinary people. They're associating with Krishna. And they were associating with saintly people all the time. See, that proves that even if you're in the association of saintly people, it doesn't mean that you become purified unless you want to. See, that's why it says, Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now let us inquire into the nature of the absolute truth. Well, he might know what the absolute truth is, but he doesn't want to uh, follow it. And that was the, the case of Vidura. I mean, of Jitarashtra, but Vidura convinced them that, look, you've wasted your whole life. Don't waste the last few moments of your life. You must do the right thing. You must leave immediately and prepare yourself to leave the body. Yeah, so, uh, but we don't have to go through all this difficult uh, process. Simply chanting Hare Krishna mantra, one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to God. In fact, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, when it's talking about the glories of the Holy Name, it says the Holy Name alone can liber liberate a person even if they're not initiated. Right? But people are so fallen in this age of Kali that initiation is required because they have so many bad habits that they have to be trained. But the Holy Name alone is enough to liberate someone. It's like Ajamil, right? He just chanted the holy name of Narayana once without any material desire. He became purified of all his sins. He didn't go back to Godhead right away. He was given a second chance. And then he went to Haridwar and started chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And then eventually he went back to Godhead. Is so, good? Yes. Yes, back. yes, yeah, definitely. You, know, you can't go anywhere without proper instruction from a proper guru. But the holy name was, so the, the, the example of Ekalabhya is there, who was uh, practicing worship of his guru, but in the wrong way. You see. So he developed some powers, but because he didn't please the guru, he never gave any dakshin to the guru. So when the guru asked him for dakshin, uh, he wanted his thumb so he wouldn't be a, a, such a great archer anymore. And he gave it to him right away. But he was, most people would think, well, that just shows how sincere he was. No, he was not that sincere. He He did it to be glorified, not because he really loved the guru or anything like that. Yeah. So even even that act was a selfish act, although it looks like it was a very sincere act. Yeah. 
So everything depends on the motive. Now, Krishna is in the heart as Paramatma. He, he can understand what the real motive is of a person. So if the, the person is like Ajamil, he, he chants the name of Narayana, not even meaning Narayana, but without any uh, material desire, it just says the name, right? without any purpose behind it, other than to say the name. And it became purified. Uh, but purification is the beginning. So you can't begin devotional service unless you're purified of your karma, or at least the karma is put on hold. Then you can begin the process of Krishna consciousness. So somehow or other, uh, you know, Ajamil was given a chance uh, to uh, correct himself and practice the, you know, under the uh, guidance of a guru, practices uh, Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> okay, so the Krishna consciousness movement is therefore distributing sublime information to the entire human society to the effect that by simply chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to Godhead. There you go. Hari Bhagavad Gita, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.